rents the air less than 20 days to the election. Court cases over the narrow notes controversy. Things are heating up in the polity and matters are getting to, the, to a head. Tonight, Buhari Super Minister will be joining me on the set tonight as we are understanding that the government will be wrapping up. But what have they done in this period in office? And so the 2023 verdict begins now. It's 18 days and we're counting. It's been showdown over the narrow swap. We're saying a court injunction to stop CBN for suspending the policy. And three states have gone to court also. And the Minister of Works and Housing, Babatine Fashola, will be joining me tonight. What has the Buhari government done over the last seven years? And why does Bola Tinubu deserve the Nigerian vote in 2023? Today, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the Senate President, Hamel Lawan of Femin, Lawan as authentic candidate of the APC for Yobe North Senator election. Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is 2023 Verdict Live on Channels Television. I'm sure Kimbalo in Abuja. Our countdown continues 18 days to the February 25th polls, and Nigerians are anticipating the opportunity to elect their leaders in February this year. So, if you have not gotten your PVC, or if you have gotten your PVC, brace up for that day when you will be able to exercise your franchise and get to elect the next president and members of the National Assembly. Where well, it talks about 2023 election is rife, we continue to monitor the major stories for you. And tonight, we touch on the main issues. But before we get deeper, let's check out some of your election news updates. The governorship candidate of the Labour Party in Abia State, Dr. Alex Oti, has expressed confidence in the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to deploy the bimodal voter accreditation system, BFAS, and electronic transmission of results in the forthcoming general elections. The Labour Party governorship candidate made the remarks during a town hall meeting at Omaha North local government area of Abia State. The main assurance that we are giving them now is to also believe that the electoral process has improved and their votes will count this time around. The Kwara State Governor Abdurrahman Abdul Razak has inaugurated 2,000 members of the Kwara State All Progressives Congress Campaign Council. Addressing members of the council in Ilori, Governor Abdul Razak asked them to go to all grassroots in the state and ensure the victory for the presidential candidate of the party, Bala Tunubu, and all candidates of the APC. The African Democratic governorship candidate in Ogun State, Mr. Biyi Otegbeye, says it is time for the Ogun West Senatorial District to produce the next governor of Ogun State. Mr. Otegbeye told supporters of his party in Yawa North local government area of the state that it will provide the dividend of democracy to citizens if voted governor. All other regions, we have had a taste of leadership in Okei Mosa, Afawa, Asikoti, Walele. It is our time, and for the benefit of everybody, we are not divided. Only one candidate from Ogun West is contesting this election. The People's Democratic Party Presidential Campaign Council in Zamfara State has commenced house-to-house -house campaign to mobilize support for the presidential candidate of the party, Atik Obubuka, ahead of the presidential and governorship elections. After the meeting with the PDP members in six local government areas in Zamfara in Anka local government area of the state, the chairman of the state PDP campaign council, Mr. Madi Aliyu, says if elected, Atiku's administration will address the insecurity problems and create employment for the youths across the country. The coalition volunteers, a non-governmental organization and support groups of the PDP campaign council in Ebony State, has called security agencies to address the insecurity situation and restore order and peace in the state. At a press briefing in Abakele Kiri State Capital, the spokesperson of the group, Mr. Darlinson Owe, called on the Ebony State government and those he says are militia forces to stop intimidating opposition. This is highly worrisome as it's nothing but an invitation to anarchy, 
bloodbath and breakdown of law and all that if nothing is done urgently. The All Progressive Congress in Imo State has described as malicious, mischievous, and total falsehood the allegations by the spokesperson of the Coalition of United Political Parties, Ikenga Ogochinyere Imo, against the Imo State Governor, Hope Ozodema. The CUPP spokesperson alleged that Governor Ozodema is behind the attack on his country home last month. The state chairman of the APC, Mr. McDonald Ebera, says Ugochinere is known in the political arena as a malicious transactional activist who should not be taken seriously by anyone as he also likes to seek undue attention. Ordinarily, we would not have bothered to dignify a character like Ugochinere, an agent provocator with a response because his antecedent is an open book. The All Progressives Congress North-South Progressive Youth Stakeholders are warning that some non-progressive elements within the presidency who are working against the victory of the party's presidential candidate Bola Tinubu in February 25 election will put the alliance between the north and southern part of the country in jeopardy. Addressing journalists in Abuja, the convener of the group, Mr. Alwan Hassan, appeals to the party's leadership to respect the bond and the alliance between the North and South by working to ensure victory for the presidential candidate Ashwaji Bola Tinubu. Members of the Action Alliance Party in the Federal Capital Territory have adopted the APGA senatorial candidate for the FCT, urging residents to vote out PDP's Senator Philip Aduda, who is currently the senator representing the Federal Capital Territory. We are going to mobilize the poor, both from grassroots and every corner of Abuja to ensure that we come out in mass to vote for him. Thank you so much, everyone. That was uh, your election news update right this hour. Don't forget that the program is interactive and we want to get your views on the topics we have for you. Uh, remember that we've had a poll put out there on our Twitter uh, at City uh, Channels TV on Twitter, and uh, we also send an, an email for you to uh, get your views in. Uh, we have some of the reports, uh, some of the results of the poll for you and how you responded to some uh, of uh, the poll and the questions you said that uh, the candidates should be responding to. So we were asking the question, which of the issues would, do you think that uh, the candidate should uh, focus more on either when campaigning or upon winning? So these are, these are the way you voted in that poll uh, on YouTube with 14, 000, over 14,000 votes, and a lot of you said security is what you think they should vote for. Uh, I'll talk about more. In, uh, on Twitter, uh, a lot of you also uh, talked about economy. This is uh, uh, the total vote on, uh, on, on YouTube, and on Twitter is over 11,000. Economy is what, how the Twitter folks uh, polled. We can tell you that President Mohamed Buhari was in Katsina State today alongside the presidential candidate of the APC, Bal Ahmed Tunubu. And it was a uh, homecoming of some sort for President Buhari, who took the presidential candidate and raised his hand at the podium. For the PDP candidate, Atiku Abubakar, he was in Benue State, where he's promised the people of Benue State that he will ensure that he stops the issue of killing and ethnic clashes should he be elected as president. What about the Labour Party candidate, uh, Peter Obi? He was in Elorin in Kwara State. As soon as he touched down uh, at the international airport in Elorin, he went straight to the uh, mayor of Elorin's palace before he went to the rally ground to uh, speak to the supporters. And part of the stories that we are following for you as our major story is some of the political parties have gone to court getting an injunction to stop the CBN of thinking of suspending the narrow notes swap policy. Three states, Kogi, Kaduna, and uh, um, Zamfara State have also gone to court over this matter. The Buhari government under the APC will be wrapping up the business, uh, their business, which they engaged with Nigerians in the past seven years or so, about uh, May this year. But after two terms in office, how would you say the Buhari government have fared, considering that the party is seeking re-election? There is a man popularly referred to as a poster boy of the Buhari cabinet from the first term. He's a former governor of Lagos State, a senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Babatunde Fashola, is our guest tonight. 
and uh, he's been uh, superintending over the works and housing ministry over the last seven and a half years or so. Tonight, Mr. Fashola joins me live here in our election studio. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Fashola. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me and Happy New Year to you <laughs> and to viewers. We're seeing for the first time, isn't it? So, this year. Although it's February, though. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've been seeing you for the first time. Thank you so much. Uh, let me time. commend uh, your organization for the investment in this new studio. And uh, it shows that you're here for the long term. Thank you so much. appreciate it. It's more beautiful to the eyes than even what you see on television. Like. Precisely so. Thank you so much. Let's get started. i like to make an assessment because... Uh, there is so much that are being imputed in this government. And you as a person, a lot budding was put on your shoulder. Let me begin uh, with uh, perhaps one project that a lot of people will be expecting to get an update on, and that is the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. In July 24, 2022, you were on Sunday Politics on Channels Television, and quote, you said, we are hoping we will be done before Christmas. What is the state of things now? Okay, we have two contractors there, RCC from kilometer 44 to kilometer 127. They are currently at about kilometer 117. So uh, we have just about 10 kilometers more on that stretch. Uh, we have Julius Berger from kilometer 43.9 to kilometer zero at uh, Ojota. They're working on about the last three kilometers into Lagos. Um, where we are is that everybody who uses that road now will tell you that there's a remarkable difference, and it is a difference for the better. So it's a work in progress. We haven't finished. But clearly, journey times have reduced significantly. And that is the purpose of investing in a road network. So in half the time that our opposition, main opposition had to address that problem, we have almost solved it. So you couldn't meet the deadline that you set, the well, timeline that in, you, you set? In construction, deadlines, and at the time we were talking, there were so many things that have moved across the world, price of products, there's been a pandemic that nobody foresaw, there's been a war that has affected logistics and supplies, and you and every uh, Fair-minded person know that some of the construction input inputs are imported. So those deadlines move. There are challenges about right of way setbacks and so on and so forth. So, but it's a continuous uh, uh, operation. There are days when, because of the behavior of some uh, uh, commuters, the road gets locked down until law enforcement and traffic management comes to ease it. During that period too, our construction materials is trapped inside it. So, for example, in Christmas, because of the heavy traffic, we had to open it, stop construction for almost about a month in order to make it uh, less, less uh, burdensome, to make the commuter experience at that time uh, more pleasant. We opened up all of the places where we barricaded because we have to barricade for the safety of the construction workers too. So we don't want trucks, vehicles to run into them. They're Nigerians just like you and I. So those are things that shift some of these uh, predictions and uh, so, so do we have a new date for the completion of the we are expecting that we will finish before before the end of uh, this term sometime in uh, between april and may but work is going on if you go there you find our contractors there working so it's possible that president buari will, f will commission that road before leaving office I, I i am optimistic that he will do so but really and truly commissioning is a ceremonial thing cut tape and we go mm. the truth is that over 90% of the road essentially is in use by the people who need it most. And the experience is better. And that is the more important thing, rather than just coming to court state. So have you settled the issue of concession on that road? No, concessioning will come later because the NSIA that keeps the funds for the, uh, the recovered funds uh, for uh, payment of contractors is also looking to attract investment. But the important thing first is to build the assets. And then you can bring private sector capacity to manage it. That was one of the mistakes that our, our uh, main opposition and predecessors did. 
they expected that one individual, it's not, not any fault of his in that sense, one individual will raise enough money, about 200 and something billion naira. Who was going to lend 200 billion naira in this economy for a 25, 30, 35 year asset? Who, who is giving 35 year money? These are responsibilities of government to build the social assets. Then you can then bring private management into it. And that is the superiority and difference of thinking uh, in terms of both of us. We what got about... the job done substantially in less the time that they had the opportunity to do it and nothing happened. M maybe but you, you, you were exposed to more funding than they were. Could well, that also think, be the case? I think you need to just look at the cycle. The biggest source of revenue for this government, for the Nigerian government until recently when we started doing better in the non oil sector, was oil revenues. Oil revenues reached $140 in their time. Uh, but instead of fixing critical assets and critical infrastructure, what did they decide to do? They did not want debt, so they left the asset. They picked $12 billion cash and went to pay to redeem debt. But immediately after that, they started borrowing again. So those are economic choices that Nigerians will have to make in the next few weeks and see which model is better. Oil, oil, tanks to, oil prices tanked to less than $40 when we came in. The recession that they foretold in 2014, they said a recession was coming. That's what we inherited. Construction workers were laid off. I was addressing them today. One of them, out of five that I spoke to in 2015, one of them had laid off 5,000 workers. And government was owing that company $3 billion. Today, we're, ex we're, we're employing workers by the hundreds of thousands because we brought them back to work. Mm. And I told them today, go and vote for your business. It's not partisan anymore. Go and vote for who has done you a better deal. And I, I'd like to ask you, there are, I mean, if we touch on all of the projects you, you promised as a government, we might not live here today. But I'd like to touch on those ones that are very, perhaps, the biggest of those projects. And the second one that gets to, uh, comes to mind is the second Niger Bridge. Uh, there was a time during the festive period that you opened up a segment of that road uh, to commuters. Uh, uh, that to uh, brighten the minds of a lot of people that have been looking forward to that road being constructed, that, that channel being opened or bridge being constructed. Um, what is the estimated time? Because the time that you also set... And I don't want to keep going back to your timeline because if I quote you back and back on your timeline, it means that it, you have not been able to meet a lot of them. But this time around, what is your uh, real, uh, realistic target of op finally opening up that road 100%? Okay, when you are talking about these assets, I, I, I think it's important to understand also that infrastructure is not the end. Buhari never campaigned on infrastructure, he campaigned on the economy. And I don't see what you can realistically do in any economy where the infrastructure is aging, it is insufficient, and it is broken. So he campaigned on So infrastructure is just a means to get the economy back on the road. One party says that, oh, we will privatize it. We've seen the attempt to privatize the Lagos Ibadro Expressway, and for 16 years it didn't produce a road. We also saw the attempt to privatize the second Niger Bridge. And for about five or six years, between 2010 and 2015, there was no bridge. Buhari understands, the APC understands, this government understands that this is a social investment. The government has to lead that investment. And so we have made that investment. Bridge is finished. The Onicha side road is essentially finished. It's the link road on the Asaba side. And again, so that you understand, uh, we, these are not uh, items for celebration for us. They are essentials of government to drive the larger objective, which is to move people. So the River Niger is just a few kilometers, barely two kilometers. People used to spend 18 hours there. And the president said, look, since you finished the bridge, they can use the construction road. Why don't you open it to the public? And we did just that. And the result and the impact was tremendous. 18 hours, sometimes a whole day became a matter of minutes. So that shows you the relationship between infrastructure development, quality of life, and so on and so forth. So what we expect now is that before the, around the 15th of May, there about the timeline we have. But don't forget, some of these timelines also shift because of the local circumstances. For like two and a half or, or two years, it has been difficult to work in parts of that place because 
they stopped work on a Monday. So if you look at the number of days we've lost over two years, you must factor it into some of these moving, moving targets. Then there are compensation issues that people don't see. We have to relocate the, uh, all the uh, uh, 132 kV lines, transmission lines across. Uh, we have to shut down power between those days. We have to work with electricity companies. So these are things that we don't control. We make estimates based on our reality, and then we deal. So it shows, first of all, a government that is planning. Plans can move. That is the reality of life. But at least we have a plan. And bridge is finished. One side of the link road is completed. It remains four kilometers of work. I think we deserve every recommendation. We've done what the opposition couldn't do. It was an electoral promise. It's now a real bridge, Bodo Boni Bridge. The road that should link Nigeria's most prolific gas production resource, where we take a lot of money. There was no road for centuries. There were three failed attempts to build that bridge. It's going to be finished in December of 2023. I've been there a couple of times. Your, your crew have covered it. So some of the heavy lifting, the Apapa Oro Shokiro built since 1975. These are economic assets. They lead to ports. They lead also discharge petroleum product. That's how you get an economy going. Mm -hmm. Almost so, uh, finished. Yeah, uh, Mr. Fashola, uh, Nigeria mm -hmm. has about 36,000 kilometers of federal roads. Yes. Uh, can you tell us tonight how many or, or what is the percentage of that, uh, of these kilometers of road have you been able <coughs> to fix or do since you got into office over seven years? At the last of... count, I, I think in the last quarter of last year, first month of the last quarter, we had over 13,000 kilometers of road under construction. And as at that time, we had covered about 8,000 kilometers of road. Just this morning, we were presenting uh, another check, symbolic check of 110 billion naira for Sukuk. And um, the Sukuk on its own, that intervention alone, has covered about 2,800 kilometers of road. Some of the roads you know, the outer marina in Lagos, or your boom or show, there's a lot, and you see the signs. So people see, so when people are talking about debt, yes, it is good to have a conversation about debt, but there are alternatives to debt. Let us look at them. Should we increase taxes? Another alternative is should we stop the project? So when people are talking about debt, they don't talk about assets. So that's Sukuk funding, which is debt has brought 2,800 kilometers of road. Those are assets. So uh, that's why I call them home economists. They don't know public finance and nation building. Because the truth is that when you are talking about debt and cash, what are your assets? Mm. Those, so, these are the assets that will last, mm. <clears throat> excuse me, for at least another one or two generations. So Mr. Fashola, when you, uh, when you talk about, I mean, talk about uh, this infrastructure, and I'll take you to one, I mean, I'm driving home a, a question here with this very slide. And I'll use South Africa as an example. South Africa is the second largest economy in Africa with over $405 billion. And uh, that's after uh, Nigeria. South Africa has the ninth longest road network with over 900, 891 kilometers of road. Is it, uh, and the 10th longest road network. South Africa's GDP grew by 2.3% in Q3 of 22, while Nigeria grew by 2.96%. Nigeria is not ranked. There is a strong correlation between infrastructure spend and economic growth. South Africa does not have many uncompleted projects like Nigeria. My question is, Mr. Fajola, how come South Africa is able to do this and Nigeria cannot? First of all, you have to understand that there are different constitutional arrangements in South Africa. South Africa is not a federal republic. We are a federal republic. And so there are uh, interchanges between levels of government. But more importantly, when was all of this South Africa's infrastructure built? Essentially, most of it was built before the independence, uh, the, the, uh, the, the liberation of South Africa uh, when Mandela was released. Essentially built by their network and their affiliations with Europe. So, if you go into South Africa, I've been there, I think the last time when there was about three or four years ago, you will see also the infrastructure is aging. Now, there was an injection of new infrastructure, the Guateng Rail, expansion of Oliver Tambo Airport, and a few other facilities when they hosted the 2010 World Cup. 
And those are some of the things that we should be doing in order to build infrastructure. So I, I'm not sure that the, the uh, uh, correlation you are trying to do, that South Africa does not have unfinished infrastructure. They have aging infrastructure. They can't even finance infrastructure spend now. That is the truth. That economy is breaking down. You can see their last two years or so, the ratings of some of their, their, their economy, junk rating. That's, that's what they call them. So there are no comparisons. But they have, they've built an, an infrastructure base that we need to replicate. So you will see us expanding our airport. So, you will see us building a new seaport. You will see us supporting private sector, investing in a new refinery led by the Dangote Group. You will see rail beginning to uh, evolve. And so these are things that we should have done when we took $12 billion out of this economy. So I'm, 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 I'm asking Mr. Fashola because... Uh, I'm answering you. No, 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 no. The <laughs> question I'm asking is there should be a correlation between infrastructure, which you mentioned, that your, your, the promise of your government is about fixing the economy. Yeah. And there should be a direct correlation when you're fixing infrastructure, it will bring some trade okay, and so commerce oh, oh, oh. benefit. Let, let, and that's why I took you let, to, let me go to, there. to the economy. Let just me go there. Moment, if you, if, so if you're so spent, let me answer now. Just for a moment, because I want to add this to add it, okay. so that I, this is a ba uh, like a, a background to the question okay. I want to ask oh, you. So if you've spent a lot of money mm. uh, on some of these projects, some of them are now debt uh, on the, as a body on Nigeria, then what benefit or how do we hope to maintain them or pay by these debts at their so, plans? So there, there, there are two things. If you go through the quarterly GDP results, right, when the recession broke, one of the, the when there's a recession generally, the first sector that is hit most is services sector. And it is the last to recover. Go and look at the last three, four, five, six GDP results and look at the first four when the recession started, services sector is back. That's when you know that you're out of recession and the trajectory is growth. And that is what our candidate is saying now, I want to double that growth, first response. The second response is that if you go and look, I, I gave you the figures when we started. The recession was predicted before we came. And I gave you some figures. One construction company had lost about 4,000 jobs, laid off people. Those jobs are back. So if you go and look in the GDP result, the sectoral breakdown, you will see transportation sector performing. It's not performing only because of rail and air. It's performing because the road network, the road sector is coming back. You talked about Lagos, Ibadan. You talked about, you didn't talk about Kano Maiduguri. You talked about Papa Urushoki. It used to be gridlock. It didn't move. So if you go and look at the quarrying sector, jobs are back. The number of quarrying companies have doubled. I released those figures today in, in, in the presentation that we did. Some have gone risen by 50%, some by 90%. Go and look at... Uh, um, how, how are these not affecting the unemployment figures? No, no, no. Just wait a minute. We're talking now economy and growth. First of all, we talk about... Some sectors have claimed back jobs. Some sectors have also lost jobs. And this is the reality of the modern economy. As technology is moving in and taking place of certain things, some jobs will be lost. Even in channels TV, some jobs have been lost because of your embracement of innovation or you have reskilled and retrained other people to go and do other things. This is the real life. Some companies have shut down. They are shutting down across the whole world. This is the reality. Now, are we growing enough to take everybody on? Not yet. But to the question you dare ask, how do you get out of a bad economy? You want to produce according to one of the candidates. How do you produce without infrastructure? Where is the production going? If you don't have power, if you don't have roads to transport it, if you can't move it by sea, you can't clear it at the port, those economic models are not going to work. This is the backbone of the future for Nigeria. And it's been done. It's not complete, but the backbone is there. Right. Look at those periods when we used to say a glory period. That was the period we built most of the infrastructure. 
That's when we built Tinkan Island and all of that. So we need to Honourable go Minister, again. We need to take a break now. Uh, when we come back, although the time I allotted for infrastructure <laughs> has taken a lot of more time, uh, but there are a few issues I like. I mean, you are the man who is always talking about tolling. Is it possible? How can we sustain and maintain these roads? Uh, the old Abe Okuta Road, have you resolved the issues with the governor of Ogun State? These are some of the issues that will come to your former principal, Bola Tinubu. Is it the person that is fit to handle the affairs of Nigeria in 2023? I'll be asking you some of these questions after this break. Stay with me, everyone. We'll be right back. Many thanks, everyone, for staying with us right here on the program. Of course, we will soon get to the breaking news that you can see scrolling on your screen right now. Part of the conversation we'll be having on the program tonight. Let's get back to our conversation with um, uh, uh, former governor of Lagos State and the Minister of Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Fashola, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Thank you so much indeed. I was going to tell you that perhaps uh, the federal government should come learn a few things uh, with us here at Channels. In all of those turmoil, China's didn't lose the job. We, in fact, employed more people. We opened more facilities. More uh, studios have been opened across the country. Increase our network base. So perhaps a few, one or two it's things that we... It's not the federal might... government that lost jobs. I mean, the there are jobs. Government, excuse me. It's not the federal government that lost jobs. It's the private sector that is the largest employer of labor. And with the amount of money you are making from adverts in this campaign <laughs> season, you clearly have... The, the, the backbone now to make more investments. I'm just, so I'm just be, setting I the record straight out. We, no, I wouldn't we, be surprised. We, 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 we have actually added more staff. I wouldn't be surprised. Than a lot of and, and, I mean, Thank you. this is a good season. So when you are reporting and your colleagues are, are reporting that Nigerian elections are expensive, let all the media houses own up to how much of it they collected. <laughs> All right, let's get back to it, Mr. Fashola. Um, I wish I could go back to the works and all of those issues, but, well, I think I need to focus on another aspect of our conversation tonight. Let's get to it. Um, there's a lot, so much that we, we need to discuss. Now, first and foremost, you made a lot of statements about um, the APC government. In fact, before the swearing in, you were very optimistic about what could be the performance of the Buhari government. You said at the time that as Nigerians voted out the Jonathan government, that if your government failed to perform, that Nigerians should vote them out. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Nigerians will obey or say, do exactly what you said the last, the, that time? So let me put it this way. Um, we are a few days to the election now, less than three weeks. We have momentum. Um, the APC will win this election. Uh, we are not looking at a coronation. We know it's a competition, but the opposition is behind, clearly behind. And let me tell you why. Election, as we all say, is a game of numbers, not so. Mm -hmm. But in those numbers, there are the mathematics of it. <clears throat> One of the principles, cardinal principles of election, is that election is a game of numbers and the mathematics and arithmetic is about addition and multiplication. It's not about subtraction and division. So one of the cardinal problems that opposition has had is that they have divided. So it won't add up. And let me tell you why. The main opposition today, Labour, NMPP, PDP, were on one side in 2019. The totality of their votes was still three point something million votes short of the vote by which we won. Now, if you were not enough when you were together, how can you be enough when you are broken up into three? Are you bringing more new people in from outside Nigeria? It's not going to add up. It's just that simple. People have made up their mind. And then all those self-serving polls that you see, I am happy that a lot of more people especially in the elite cadre, are showing interest in our elections. I've been polling since 2002. This is the 21st year. And immediately you started, they came on your program to come and discuss those polls, 1,000 samples. I, I used to laugh when I watched them at home. They were self-serving. Sample base was inadequate. If you did basic probability in mathematics in secondary school, you would not know that those polls were either self-serving or they were totally incompetent or a combination of Have you of conducted people. your own Just post? a minute. Let me finish. Mm -hmm. Just a minute. So you will see uh, undecided number, 34, 40%. Where do you get that? The polls we have, a sample size that started with 20,000 people in 2014. 
And we were talking to those who have voted before, not those who have never voted. Likely voters who have voted before, and then those who promised that oh, this was their first time. That was the base of our poll since 2014. Never been wrong. Let me also tell you that we've reduced the numbers now, but we don't do telephone, phone in poll. In person, we've done a 5,000 sample polls. APC is clearly ahead. With how many, what percentage? <laughs> I won't tell you that. Yeah. I don't worry. <laughs> Let my now, let me tell you. So, to the undecided, yeah. to the undecided, the number of undecided is now averaging below 5%. So, let me say to those undecided people, this is a job interview. And one of the things you should be looking at now is, first of all, what is the reference of the candidates from their previous employers? So before we, no, 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 please, please. That, that's one, before we get into that, Mr. Fashola. You don't want to go there. No, 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 we go there. <laughs> but I asked the question earlier, and it's about what you said. And you were I'm telling you that this is what the polls say. We are going to win. I'm answering you. And I'm as your you government, the as your party, deliver on the promises to Nigeria. I'm telling you that we are going to win. Most of the promises that we made, mm -hmm. we are working on them. We are evolving. We are making progress. In some places, we need to do more. And this is why we feel that we will be entrusted with the capacity to do, to complete what we have started, because people can see the difference. One of the things you fail to see is that, look, even in the process leading up to the evolution of the candidates, right, one candidate became very polarizing, divided the country into two, polarized his party, divided it further. And then they went into subtraction. They lost some of their governors. We've gained more governors. So where is the path to victory? except in those paid and sponsored polls, 1,000 samples, where 500 people don't participate. And about, so, so look, listen, this is empiric. The rubber is meeting the road now. And you will begin to see campaigns begin to lose steam. You know, <clears throat> when Alex Ferguson and Asen Wenger used to compete and run each other's clothes, there was one season Alex Ferguson said, this is squeaky bump time. Mm. Now we're in squeaky bump time. To the special one. We are, we are on the home run now. To the special and one you will see, in the, in the, the seats will get hot. <laughs> so, so this is where we are. We have the momentum and yeah. we're not going to lose it. I know you play football. I know you're a Man U fan. Uh, but uh, at some point, there will be question, and you have changed coaches several times in that football club. Now, the idea is about the supporters who are, I can say they are Nigerians. And I'm, I'll get you back to the question I asked earlier. Yeah. Have you performed? formed to the point that Nigerians will vote your party again. We've been talking about the economic differences, for example. We've told you sectors that have gained strength. We've told you transport. We've told you truckers. We've told you haulage. We've told you ports that have been expanded. These are economic aids. There's always also a distance between policy and results. In terms of security, for example, in spite of all of what we have had to go through, which is really unfortunate, and let me be very clear about that, there's a marked difference, a real stark difference. And, you know, I came to Abuja in 2015, but before we get there, before 2015, two things were happening, two things were happening. Nigeria could not hold any of its public events, May Day rallies, ceremonial events, October 1 events, at the Eagle Square. We were hiding in the villa. That's not a vote for security. It's not a vote for security. All that has happened post Buhari. For those who lived in Abuja here, let me remind them, all of the major public places, restaurants, bars, hotels, entertainment, these are jobs that were lost. They closed at seven, barricaded by uh, sandbags. All of that has been turned around. Now, before Buhari, there was a denial that there were no children kidnapped at all from Chibok. Unfortunately, we haven't got all of them back. But something has moved significantly. I think over 200 and something of them have come back from denial. Unfortunately, Les Sheribu is still, is still not recovered. But this is the difference. Now, the problem is that new problems have arisen. But the difference between us and them is that we solved the problems they denied existed, while they were hiding in the villa, we were out there confronting the problems. We haven't finished solving the problems, but there's a stark difference in momentum. We moved the needle. Yeah. So I mean, I'll get and we didn't to. And we did life to... without security challenges. Yeah. Uh, and now because you you promised three things, and uh, uh, because I need you Let to talk about. Let me go to about... the third one: anti-corruption. Let me give you one example. You were talking about Lagos Ibadan, Second Niger Bridge. Part of the money that is building it 
was money that was stolen out of this country that Buhari has recovered, brought back in. So you will see the pattern. Money that left the, the country before Buhari, mm. Buhari is the one bringing them back in. Because sometimes we just focus on anti-corruption, how many people have been jailed, how many people have been sectioned. Now, President Buhari just approved 114 billion, I think, about two weeks ago. Money is recovered by law enforcement agencies to put into these three projects. Because we still don't have all the money to... Mr. Fashola, because of our time... That is because, the difference. Because I, I would like you to talk about the issue of electricity the, and Mr. Tinobu uh, tonight. Uh, because you were, one, you were categorical about the issue of electricity. In fact, you said, stone us if we cannot give you light. No, I didn't uh, say that. Don't, you were being no, I didn't say stone, stone us. What did you say, sir? I never said stone What did you say, sir? No, I didn't say that. You got on a performance of electricity. Remember, just calm down. Just calm down. I'm calm. I'm just actually... Calm I'm, I'm the one... One of the, the things that was said about me was that we, I said we would electrify uh, Nigeria in six months. It was a lie that I allowed to run until the day I asked my media men, play the tape back. And since then, that lie has gone. Don't say things that I didn't say. Okay, please, correct, correct. the, I mean, correct so, the narrative. If I don't know which not, event you are being correct. You are being quoted as saying, and I, I'm, I'm I a said public it. servant. Yeah. I address the public from time to time. Just like you sit down here. Can you possibly remember all of the things you have said in all your daily and nightly interviews from your head? That is logically impossible. So don't ask me to do the impossible. But if you give the context and the event and the date, I will tell you what I said. But I know that in my nature, the way I speak, I don't say those kinds. I don't use words like stone. I'm not even a violent person. I don't, stone is violence. I don't use those kind of words. They are not part of my vocabulary. So and I'll get you to talk about Mr. Tinobu just in a moment. So in 2015, the inflation rate is about 9%. Now it's in double digits, over 20%. Uh, you how see, many places if has I, the inflation if I, rate gone down across just the Just a moment, sir. No, no, no. How many places has the inflation just, rate just, gone just down a moment. across if the If you world? allow me to ask the question. How many places are there no cost of living challenges, like, like, whether in Europe or America? You, Mr. Fashola, I'm very sure that you saw some few queues on the road. Oh, yes, I way. did. You saw how much of queues people are uh, having at the banks. I and the videos with Nigerians are, so for what they if, are going If people through, are going through this economy woes, how do you then convince Nigerians that your party deserves you see, to be you better? You are not interrupting no, no, I am where, the one where, asking where the question. You, you, did not, this you did not allow me to ask people. Mr. Fah you didn't allow me to ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> you were anticipating my question, but you didn't allow me to land. Please go ahead, sir. So, in the process of interrupting me, I lost your question. <laughs> Can you repeat? I am it? saying the fear queues that we, we see on the road. Because uh, election <laughs> 101 in five is coming. No, up. no, no, don't worry. We still have some five minutes more. Okay. And you will talk about Mr. So Tinobu. tell me. So I was asking these economic woes that Nigerians are experiencing the fear queues, yeah. the ATM, the queues they're having, uh, the hurry time they're having to even get their own money. Nigerians are all buying Naira with Naira. How do you convince Nigerians that under the Buhari government that these things are happening, please vote us again? So let me say that, as I said earlier, I, I, I empathize with those challenges, and, uh, but some of them are the result of policy, and uh, it is the responsibility of public servants, especially uh, those responsible for those uh, uh, policies to look back and say, did we intend to cause this pain? And if the policy is not working, perhaps you have to readjust and to also ask yourself whether you thought this through. As a public officer before and now, I have had cause to reverse myself when I saw that my policies were causing unintended results. And so I have no responsibility on those two areas. And therefore, I cannot speak to the details of the facts that are available to the policymakers. But the important thing is that those policies are not yet delivering the results and are delivering a lot of inconvenience for people. And that is why our candidate was the first to speak out about it, even though it was his party and his, that was in government. He was the first. And that is consistent with uh, Ashwaju Tinumbu's procedure as an activist, the fighter of the, of the downtrodden, the, the champion of the downtrodden. And once he sees people in pain, so it was after he spoke that the others now found their voices. And one of them has now come back to say, okay, don't even extend it. What is he benefiting from contributing to the pain? By saying don't extend it. Because it is clearly having consequences that are not intended. One of the consequences that is unintended is pain and inconvenience. And I think that every responsible policymaker should step back.
and say, hey, is this what we intended? Mm. So, as a senior advocate of Nigeria, please weigh in on the breaking news that we're having right there on the screen. And two things are happening. Three APC governors today took the federal government to court over the Nara redesign deadline, and another 14 political parties are threatening to boycott the election if the deadline is changed. How does that have to do with senior advocate? They've gone That's to a court. lawyer. I'm, I'm asking for your views. They've gone to court. I haven't seen the court processes. I haven't seen what they filed. It would be extremely irresponsible of me to come here, to come and be talking about things I have no details about. I, I wasn't trained that way. You don't, you don't Lawyers see, don't give opinion about facts that they don't have. No responsible lawyer. Anybody who does it uh, is probably practicing another trade, not the profession I was trained in. So you don't choose to, to comment on that? I don't have the facts. All right. So You're expressing me to... Uh, ex to no, so do you get it? I, I, I got your point. an opinion and, and, without and, the facts. It's taken. I got that, your that's point. Not, that's not so the because way to it, go. It, 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 it relating to it the matter... It would opinion. No, it's relating to the matter in which you were talking about, the, the policy of the central bank, the Naira note, and the controversy that no, you generated. No, the facts that I can talk about the policies that we see pain. I see people at ATMs. I see people in banks, crowded, struggling to get their money. I get feedback. I don't have cash, too. You don't? I don't. <laughs> so the policy is not working? Well, not, not at this moment. Okay. So it's causing unintended consequences. And I, I, I'd like to ask you uh, a rather, well, I wouldn't say it's an uncomfortable one. But Latinobu, why do you think he's the best man to be Nigeria's president? Well, don't forget that we are running a democracy. So there are people who have their views about who should be the candidate and who should not be the candidate. But if you go back to the origins of democracy, it says let the will, this, the majority will, that was the will that prevailed in an open primary. That's our candidate. And so he's the legitimate candidate of our party. And our party has momentum to beat the other parties who used to be one and have now broken up into three. And when they were one, their votes were not enough to beat us in 2019. Now that they've broken to three, how can the sum total of three parts that was inadequate as one be able to take us? That's my answer. I mean, and I think the interest of Nigeria should be paramount, isn't it? And no matter what the game is or the end game may be like, in all of the competitors, 18 of them that, are, that will be on the ballot on the 25th of February, can Mr. Uh, Tunobu fix some of the problems of this country? He says he's coming on uh, the slogan, Renewed Hope. Yes. So, again, clearly if you look at his track record in his previous public service experience, whether when he was senator, he chaired the largest committee of the Senate ever. They broken that committee into about five. Banking, uh, currency, I think appropriation or something. They broke it into about four. If you look at his experience and his record as governor of Lagos, right? I've had cause to tell people, and I will repeat it again, many of his policies have gained widespread acceptance across Nigeria, including opposition states. Ten opposition states have passed Office of Public Defender law, his state-grown initiative to support people who did not have access to justice, who couldn't afford lawyers. Lhasa, to improve advertisement and revenue for local government, 15 states have passed similar laws. Lasma, his own state traffic management policy, 16 states have passed such laws. Judicial reforms, Paying judges extra from when he became governor, judges were earning 50 something thousand. It has become a national revolution. And I keep asking if opposition and his own party have embraced his policies and ideas in governance, which is what we want to elect him to do, why are we hiding behind a finger? Even some of his uh, uh, colleagues who were in opposition states have joined him. They worked with him. So where are the other candidates? Who are the people who worked with him, with them? Who are their commissioners? Who are their former bosses? What did they have to say about them? These are the job recruitment uh, requirements. That you when are. you are asking people, when channels wants to recruit somebody, they'll say, who did you work with? 
won't you? What is your previous reference for where you are coming but from? What about his present capacity? What is, what is the issue about his capacity? Uh, you... He has run the hardest campaign. Wait a minute. He has run the hardest campaign. The toughest fought primaries. And even after that, he was the one going around, going to embrace people he defeated. And that shows his leadership quality that this is not a winner-takes-all thing. This is nation building. And he's still campaigning. And I ask people, are any of you even able to do some of what this man is doing at his age? And you are doubting his fitness? You need to run his race first before you know whether he's fit or not. All right. On, on the, you on, need to sleep yeah. the few hours he sleeps before you know whether you can do what he does. We, we, we need to wrap up now and quickly too, Mr. Fashola. I and, thought you and, said we had a lot of time. No, no, not a lot of time. <laughs> but we, we, had, we had some few minutes after, afterwards. I just have about 60 seconds and I will ask you two questions in that bit. Two? Uh, two in questions 60 seconds. In, in 60 seconds. 30 you, seconds apiece. You really want me to answer that? <laughs> Now, uh, one, one of it is being the fact that um, in this race, mm. if you had opportunity to choose anyone aside Balatinobu to vote for, who would that be? Honestly, given what we have to choose, I would still choose Balatinobu. Because this is what is on the table. This is really what is so on the table. So compared to other candidates? Is, is, by record, by performance, by industry, by energy. Look, go and look at the tribute I wrote when he turned 60. All right. So, so uh, you don't I, want I'm me to a... answer again. <laughs> I, my final question is this. And this the one guy is built seconds. like a tank. <laughs> yeah. He looks frail. You think he's going to fall? He doesn't fall. You covered him, I think, in 2002. Very well. When he could barely get up to go to his campaign. An opposition was saying that, oh, if they elect him, he will die. He's still alive. All right. 2002 to now. Mr. Fashola, <laughs> just in 30 seconds, APC governor suing You underestimate APC. him <laughs> at your own peril. <laughs> APC governor suing APC government. Is the house divided against itself? Well, you can try as much as possible, or some of you, some members of the public, can try to infect us with the virus, the G5 virus that has infected the other political party. Unfortunately, there is no vaccine for that virus. <laughs> so, look, constitutionally, the courts are there to resolve disputes. I don't have the facts of this case. I'm getting them in studio, and I won't comment on those, on those right. facts. Mr. Fashola, I've interviewed you several times, and you have not changed. Thank you so much. You are a good interviewer. <laughs> so you are getting better, so you have changed. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Mr. Babatune Fashola, Minister of Works and Housing. Thank you so much, indeed. And I wish you and your party the very best in the election. Thank, thank you, you. Sheryl. It's good to see you again. We take a break, everyone. And when we come back, the political parties who had gone to court and threatened to withdraw from the February 25th race will be joining me to speak about the lawsuit in which they filed in court and the reasons for that. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back. Thank you so much indeed, everyone, for staying with us. Let's now turn our attention to uh, some court cases. Now, 13 out of the 18 political parties in Nigeria have threatened to withdraw from the February 25 and March 11 general elections in Nigeria over the narrow redesign policy of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Uh, they held a press briefing today called the Coalition of Chairman of Political Parties where uh, they commended President Buhari on the, the redesign of the 200, 500, and 1,000 Naira Bank note. In fact, some of the parties have since gotten an injunction well, that you can see on your screen uh, on the, from the court to stop the CBN from suspending the policy. You can see there. Well, earlier today, uh, three states have gone to court dragging the federal government before the court, uh, Kogi, uh, Kaduna, and Zamfara State over these Naira policy matter. Let's get to talk to one of the political party leaders who held a press conference. I'm being joined tonight on the program by Kenneth Udenze. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Udenze, for joining us tonight on the program. Thank you, Mr. Sheon. Yeah, so you got an injunction of court today. Sure, certainly. Absolutely. Is it 14 or 13 of you? Um, is, um, we have to get four political parties out of the four, uh, 13 political parties to quickly get to court because what we had, the press conference we had today was an emergency. And because of the situation and what is happening in the country, we quickly have to put our acts together 
push uh, four out of the 13 to go to get this injunction today, and we're very happy about that. So the court granted your prayers? Definitely, the court granted our prayers. The Justice and Nigerian Land Chair of FCT High Court granted all our prayers. So Nigerians should go back home and sleep and get sure that uh, nothing will happen with respect to issues of hoarding of um, the Naira notes. So it is over, and the issue that has to do with um, uh, the 10th uh, of um, February deadline of the CBN remains sacrosanct based on this order we, we had today. So uh, that injunction, uh, t it's, uh, it's effective for seven days. It's effective for seven days. Because it's an FCT I court. Exactly. So uh, until uh, the substantial case is now being heard in being court. Being determined, exactly. Now, so, uh, now the, let's look at the reason why you went to court. Okay. Why did you have to resolve to that? Yeah, we have to resolve to that. Um, well, we have to look at it from the political angle. Because um, less than uh, 19 days to the election. Every political party in Nigeria is working hard to make sure they gather the necessary votes to win election. And um, anything that can deprive us of that, we have to make sure as politicians to make sure that it, it never holds. And what is going on you know, in the polity is very, very, um, is very, very appalling. If you look at out of the 18 political parties, only one political party is against uh, the CBN policy. And uh, we looked at it and based on the, um, some of the permutations we have, because uh, just like the minister that just left your studio now, they keep talking about winning an election. It's not going to be as business as usual, because definitely APC is going to lose the election. A lot is going on the ground. We are working seriously between the PDP and the Labour Party, Action Alliance, name other political parties. It is either, it can be any other party, but not APC because they have caused a lot of damage to the country. That's why we have to go to court, because they are pushing. You mentioned three governors that went to uh, court today, but we are smarter. We have to go and get this injunction today so that um, Nigerians can you know, be sure that they have other parties apart from the APC government, apart from the APC political party, that can actually give Nigerians what they want. So this is about politics, actually. Yeah, it's all about politics. So not really about the Nigerian people. It is also, if you talk about politics, talk, talking about politics, talking about good government, you know the it's all why, about... You no. know the reason why I asked the question, okay. if Go it ahead. was about the Nigerian people or not. And I'm asking, uh, either uh, APC, you know, PDP or Labour Party, the big question here is the average Nigerians who are not even card-carrying members of any political parties are the ones bearing the brunt. They're the ones spending long hours on queue. In fact, if you ask your bank to give you money, they'll tell you this is just how much we can give you. We don't have enough cash. So this is the suffering of the average Nigerian, not about the political elite. Yeah. So that's the reason why I'm asking. So is this lawsuit about the average Nigerians who cannot get this money? Because if you say that's the reason for going to court, yes. that has to be substantiated, isn't it? It is also about the average Nigerians. Our going to court is about the... For me to even come here, it takes me time to able to get money from POS before I got a black market somewhere, before getting driving down to this place. So everybody is, is suffering the problem. There's no better time than now. If you, how do you, when do you have to, you know, postpone the doomsday? So the best time is now. So, and yeah, okay. So I'm looking at the policy. Okay. Um, the technicalities of that, of deploying this money and all of that, for those who are the, the school of thought of increase the deadline so that Nigerians can have more time. Did you think about that? What's your position in response to those? If you look at... Um, the, from 31st of January, it has been extended to the next 10 days. And if you look at the people that have been going to bank to deposit money, we have our intelligence, we have been sending people across, and we found out that most Nigerians are no longer depositing money. The people who are afraid of all these are those that have stuck money somewhere and looking for, it's not ordinary Nigerians, there are money. The only thing is that we've been able to get this order today, at least getting all the banks, it's about 27 banks, for them to release, instead of uh, uh, collecting all the, all the funds and sending it and starting it to politicians, most of the money that has been released by uh, Central Bank of Nigeria, by our understanding, have been, you know, hoarded by some of the, uh, the parties, who, uh, particularly APC. So a lot of, of things is happening, and the only way we can stop this is by going to court, and we've been able to achieve this. So there's nothing anybody can do about that. It is seven days. The ten days we, ha we have actually been, been caught by those politicians who think they can uh, use money to buy votes. What are the facts uh, on this uh, scenario? 
we have our facts. What are the facts? And it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a privileged communication. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of is, go, is going, on, going on. There is a plans to start demonstration by Thursday. We have this intelligence. By who? By some of these governors who have gone to run to Buhari to see what they can do to make sure that this uh, policy is being extended. Now, you said earlier that this is about politics. And you said you, uh, you people will like uh, any other party aside APC to win this election. Absolutely. Give us, uh, talk more about that. Yes. Why so? Why so? <laughs> Nigerians have seen it all. For the past seven to eight years now, rounding up from the APC government all the promises they made to Nigerians, what are we seeing today? Nothing is going on. Nigerians are crying, just like you're talking about all these policies. Look at the fuel queue. Talk about the, uh, the, the ASO strike that just ended. Look at the NSAS. Look at the palliative that governor starts at, the, at their various states during the uh, COVID-19 palliative. The APC government have nothing, they have nothing to show off. I mean, when you consider some of the people that are even contesting this election, can you compare the APC presidential candidate with that of other, other political parties? That is why some of us, we are working to see how to form government of uh, national unity, which APC as a party have refused on themselves. They feel that it's a uh, winner takes it all. But some of us who belong to other political parties, we are also working, we are discussing at that level, both uh, at the level of uh, talking with uh, the, 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 the P2B movement, the Atiku, uh, PDP, and every other political party. What we are talking about is government of national unity. When one of these parties win election, definitely you call every other, you know, patriots together for us to work together and build a nation of our dream. It is not all the making of, uh, of empty promises. Look at what we are facing in Nigeria today. That is the reason why some of us have come together to make sure we work hard politically to push this government out of power. And that is just our interest. Mm -hmm. And that is what we are doing. What options are left for Nigerians? Those, if, who, those who are going to the poll on sure. the 25th. What are you telling them tonight? What we are telling Nigerians tonight is for them to look at where we are coming from, where we have been today and where we are going. It has not been rosy. It has been terrible. And the best option for us is for us to look at, because in a few days to come, they say 24 hours is a long day in politics. In a few days to come, there is going to be a lot of discussion. There is going to be a lot of understanding among us, the political parties. And I can guarantee you here, mark my word, that the political parties are going to come out to unitedly adopt a particular candidate. At the end of that, among some of these political parties... How many political parties? We're about 13 of us. So you, you will merge or you will... We are not going to merge. Is that not going are, to be? You, you, uh, merger is almost um, is impossible that, is, is out of it now. So but you will coalesce yes. and uh, f line up behind one political behind party? Behind one, at the end of the day. We are which, looking at that option. Which candidate is this? We are looking at that option. We are going to announce that in a few days to come. Okay. And Nigeria, we are going to surprise Nigerians with that. Well, a lot is going on. What are the us. parties you are looking to align with? Well, what are the options including my party Action Alliance. And my presidential candidate, Hamza Mustafa. We are talking about also uh, somebody like Atiku Abaka, Pitobi, uh, Kwan Kwaso. We are, oh, these are men, these are people that can turn things around in this country. And we believe with the level of discussion we are, we are, uh, that is going on, things will change within the few days to come. Beyond this injunction, what are your next steps? Well, our next steps beyond this injunction, is wait, we have been able to achieve this. So content, it remains sacrosanct. The next thing is for us to wait whatever, wherever they are going to come from, particularly the APC, uh, you know, as a party. So right. we are waiting and to see what we are going to do, and I believe that um, with, the, with the strategy we have adopted and what we have to do, which is, very, very, uh, which is a kind of secret for now, uh, we are going to release it to Nigeria maybe in the next coming week, right. and Nigerians will be better off it. Can I tell Deize, thank you so much indeed. One of the political party leaders who went to court uh, to get an injunction and said they will boycott the election should there be any suspension of the uh, CBN policy. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Before for I go tonight, let me uh, tell you about the results of the poll that you participated. And this is how uh, some of you uh, um, responded when we asked you uh, which of the policies or which of these issues would you uh, think, do you think? that uh, the candidates should focus more on in the campaign on when they win election. Uh, we had security, the economy, corruption, and electricity. On Twitter, over 11,000 uh, polling uh, uh, people participated, and this is what he said. 42% said economy. On uh, YouTube, uh, over 14,000 people participated. 
and most of those said uh, security on that. Let me see if I can take one or two uh, responses on some of your messages. All right, we are totally out of time. Keep them coming. Tomorrow, uh, we give you yet another poser for you to chew on as elections are now in 19 days away. Thank you so much indeed, everyone, for watching. I'm Sean Akimalo. I'll see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. God bless Nigeria.